Welcome back to Lingoni English. My name is Emily. Are you considering going to college in the United States? Or have you seen depictions of it in movies and TV shows and wondered if it's really like that? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about what college in the United States is like. Before we get started, I want to point out that college is a false cognate or false friend in some languages like Spanish or French. If you know the difference, let the other viewers know in the comment section below. So let's get started. What's the difference between college and university? Well, in the US, we often use these two words interchangeably. Even when we say university, we often mean college. For example, when I talk to my American friends that I went to university with, we will often talk about the good times we had in college. Also, note that both college and university are often referred to as schools, unlike in some other countries. So, although we use them interchangeably, there is a small difference between university and college. Often, colleges are smaller. Many universities have colleges within them. For example, Many universities have a College of Arts and Sciences within it, where you would study linguistics or maybe teaching. Also, many universities have a College of Business, where you might study finance, for example. You are still part of the university, but you're also part of the college within it. So, you might be wondering when classes typically happen at universities. The school year usually runs from August until May, with a break in December. The time before the break is referred to as first semester, and the time after the break is referred to as second semester. You can also take classes during the winter and summer breaks, if you want to get ahead or catch up. There are also schools that offer three trimesters or other schedules as well. So what kind of degrees can you get at colleges and universities in the United States? First, there's an associate's degree. An associate's degree lasts usually around two years and you only study one subject. Next is the bachelor's degree. A bachelor's degree usually takes about four years to complete, and while you're studying your main subject, you also take general education courses, which give you skills and information about other areas than your own field of study. Next, we have a master's degree. A master's degree usually takes two years to complete and comes after a bachelor's degree. You only focus on your one subject and there is often research involved. Lastly, doctorate or PhD. You get your doctorate or PhD after you've already gotten your master's. And this can take anywhere from three to seven years to complete. Let's move on to the different types of colleges in the U.S. There are many different kinds of colleges in the U.S., so I'll give you a few of the most common ones. Vocational schools. Vocational schools are schools where students can go to learn a trade or skill working with their hands. An example of this could be cosmetology, where you learn to cut and dye hair or do nails. And another example is auto mechanics, where you learn to fix parts of cars so that they work properly. 
Next, we have community college. These are also called city colleges or junior colleges. Community colleges often offer associate's degrees and can help students transition to a larger university to finish their bachelor's degree there. Community colleges are usually very affordable compared to universities, which appeals to a lot of people as the cost of university in the United States can be very high. Next, we have universities. These are the typical college experiences that you often see in movies and TV shows. Universities are generally very large and offer many kinds of degrees, including bachelors, masters, and PhDs. Some universities have a state's name attached to them. For example, University of Oklahoma, University of Florida, Ohio State University. Every state has at least one state university and they are often more affordable than private universities because state and local governments help fund them or give them money to keep them going. State universities also can be more affordable because if you are a resident of that state, you can receive an education at a discounted price. Next, private universities. Private universities are universities that do not receive money from the government. A good example of a private university is Duke in North Carolina. Every state in the US has at least one private university. Private universities are usually more expensive than public because they don't offer in-state tuition, but the students are often more geographically diverse because they come from a variety of different places. Lastly, we have Ivy League schools. Ivy League schools are often the settings of many films and TV shows. These are universities like Harvard, Princeton, or Yale. These are extremely hard to get into. You have to have above average academic performance, which makes them some of the best schools in the nation. Okay, so how do you get into college? Let's talk about admission. To get into university, you often have to take the ACT or the SAT. These are the two most popular tests for getting into college. Most colleges accept either test and they're very similar to each other. Students study for these tests and take them while they're in high school still, often their last year or their senior year. Note that these exams only account for part of your application and not all schools require them. This is different from a country like China, for example, where the college entrance exam is the biggest thing your admission is based on. Also, your grades. Your GPA is also an important part of getting into a college. Your GPA is your grade point average, and it needs to be a certain number depending on the college you're applying for. Your GPA is often out of four, with four being the best. If you make all A's in your classes, you will have a 4.0. If you make all C's, you will have a 2.0. But usually most GPAs fall somewhere in the middle, so you might have a 2.6 or a 3.4. Also, sometimes college essays are necessary. Academic achievements or awards you got for academic performance are also relevant when applying for college. If you did any other activities in high school, like volunteering, sports, or clubs, these could also help you when applying to college. Well, that's it for College in the U.S. Part 1. Stay tuned for Part 2 to find out the cost of college and a little more about the typical college experience for a bachelor's student 
at a mainstream American university. Thanks for watching Lingoni English. See you soon.